This is Richard with JR Propo D4 Aviation, and this is the second in a series of videos designed to help the viewer program their new JR Elite or Matrix transmitter for electric flybarless helicopter use. As always, safety is a primary concern. The programming of the radio is to be done with only the transmitter on. The model should not be powered up and the motor should not be connected. This video will include inhibiting unused switches from controlling various channels, changing the location of the flight mode switch, and checking the new location of the flight mode switch. Everyone has their own preferences regarding which transmitter switch to use for which function. You don't have to use the switches shown in this video, but to avoid confusion, the switch location should be consistent across all helicopter models in your radio. Regarding flight modes, there's a lot of controversy regarding whether or not to use a normal flight mode. Historically, a normal flight mode has a throttle curve that starts at zero and ends at either a specific governed level or 100%. I think many of us who learned to fly in the 70s and 80s still use a normal mode. In those days, you had to roll the power on in normal mode to take off, then switch into idle up or stunt mode for aerobatics. Early on, as I recall, there was only one governor on the market, the Tactron, and although these seemed to work well, I only ever saw one in use. The downside of a normal mode with a throttle curve that starts with a zero throttle setting is that if you forget to switch from normal to stunt one or two after takeoff, then take the helicopter inverted, you'll almost certainly crash because when you increase negative pitch, you will pull the throttle down. If you go to full negative pitch, you'll kill the throttle. With the advent of modern governors with good slow starts in electric helicopters, a normal mode with a throttle curve that begins at zero is no longer necessary. The current wisdom seems to be to use a flat governed curve in whatever flight mode you take off and land in as well as your stunt flight modes. In these videos, we're gonna show you how to set both types of curves we leave the choice of whether or not you want an older style throttle curve in normal mode or a flat curve up to you. The first flight mode will be a normal mode and will be used for takeoff and landing only. This is to be a precision mode with fairly low RPM, fairly low rates, and quite a bit of expo. The second flight mode will be stunt one. This will be set up for smooth aerobatics and relatively mild 3D. The rates will be higher than normal mode and the expo lower. RPM will also be higher than normal mode. The third flight mode will be stunt two. This will be set up for harsh 3D, so it will have higher rates, still lower expo settings than stunt one, and still greater RPM. We will be showing how to adjust the actual rates, expo, and gyro gains in a later video. We're gonna start the programming in this video by inhibiting any unused switches from controlling any unused channels. From the home screen, we're going to touch the menu icon. And now we're in the function menu. We're going to touch the system button at the top here. At the lower left of the system menu is the channel setting button. Touch it. We're now in the channel setting screen. Now we saw this screen before when we assign the channels to control the gyro gains. We're gonna to touch the arrow on the right to go to the second page. Okay, once again, we have rows of information. This is the channel number, this is the function, this is the switch that controls it. In this case, it's switch K. And now we're taken to the device select screen. We're gonna to touch the inhibit button and we're gonna to touch the back key on the left face of the transmitter to go back to the channel setting screen. One thing I should mention is that JR uses the terms input and device interchangeably. Okay, we're gonna repeat this operation for channel 10, which is switch L in this case, click on it, go back to the inhibit button, click on it, and then hit the back button. We're now back in channel setting. We're just going to keep repeating this exercise for all of the remaining channels.
Okay, at this point, none of the remaining channels 9 through 16 are controlled by any of the switches on the transmitter. We're going to push the back button on the face of the transmitter again and return to the system menu. The next thing we're going to do, which is a little bit more involved, is we're going to change the location of the flight mode switch. Now, by default, the flight mode switch on the Elite and Matrix transmitters for helicopters is switch K. This is at the top of the transmitter at the right toward the front. You'll hear it change flight modes as I switch it. Step one. Step two. You can leave the flight mode function on this switch, or you can choose any of the three position switches on the transmitter for the flight mode switch. I prefer using switch D, which is on the left side of the transmitter, toward the front, in the opposite position from switch K. It should be noted, if you move any function from one switch to another on the Elite or Matrix transmitters, you must disable the original switch, or the function will operate from both locations. In this case, failure to do this would result in two different switches controlling the same flight mode functions. And the, the same is true of throttle hold. If you move that, you have to disable it in the old location or you'll have two switches that will cause throttle hold. Okay, we're still in the system menu from before. So now we're gonna move down here to the lower right where it says flight mode setting and touch the button. You are now in the flight mode menu. This menu will allow you to map the flight modes to the switches, rename the flight modes, and add flight modes if you so desire. There are four rows of boxes on this screen, each allowing access to the four default flight modes, normal, stunt one, stunt two, and hold. We're gonna begin by touching the icon switch to the right of normal mode. We're now on the switch select screen. On this screen, you can see an overall view of the switches on the transmitter. We're going to touch switch K, which is the existing flight mode switch, and it's currently highlighted in red. Now we have an enlarged view of the switches in the general area of switch K. Switch K is again highlighted in red. We're going to touch the image of switch K again. A window has appeared with the letter K in the upper left side. On the right are three buttons labeled position zero, position one, and position two. There's a check mark next to the position zero button. We're gonna to touch this button and the X will disappear. We're gonna to touch the red X in the upper right hand corner. Now in this local view of the switches around switch K, we can see that switch K is no longer highlighted in red. We're gonna hit the back button we're back in the switch select screen, and again, switch K is no longer highlighted in red. We're going to hit the back button on the face of the transmitter. And we're going to repeat this operation for the next two flight modes. So for stunt one, we click on the image of the switch on the right. Back in the switch select menu, we're going to touch on switch K, which is highlighted. Now in the enlarged view of switch K, we're going to touch it again. Back to the small window for switch K. Now we see the position one box is checked. We're gonna to touch it and remove the check. We're gonna back out again by hitting the red X. Again, switch K is no longer highlighted. We're gonna hit the back button. In the larger view here, we're gonna see switch K is no longer highlighted. We're gonna press the back button again. Again, we're gonna repeat this for stunt two. We're gonna press the image of the switch. We're gonna press the image of switch K, which is once again highlighted in red here, and press it once again in this view. Now in the small window with switch K in it, we see the position two button has a check next to it. We're gonna click that, remove the check, back out. Once again, switch K is no longer in red. We're gonna hit the back button. We're gonna hit the back button again, and now we're back on the flight mode setting screen. So at this moment, we have no switch assigned to control the flight modes. Now we're going to assign switch D as our flight mode switch. So still in the flight mode setting screen, we're gonna to move to the right where the image of the switch is and touch it. Now we have the large view of the transmitter with all the switches. We're gonna to touch switch D. And now in the sort of local view, 
which shows switch to unit. We're going to touch that again. And we have a small window identical to the one we had for switch K, but this one is for switch D. We're going to touch the position zero button to put a check in it. We're going to hit the red X to back out. Notice in this view that switch D is now highlighted in red. We're going to hit the back button to back out. Again, in this view and switch D is now highlighted in red, we're going to hit the back button to back out. And we're going to repeat this operation for stunt one. We'll touch the switch icon, touch the image of switch D again, and one more time. In this case, we're going to touch the position one button. We're going to back out again. Note that switch D is now highlighted. Back out again. Switch D is again highlighted in this view. Back out again. We have to repeat this now for stunt two. Touch the image of the switch over to the right. We're going to touch switch D, which is not highlighted in red. We're going to touch the larger image of switch D. In this case, we're going to touch the position two button and put a check by it. As we back out, we'll see that switch D is highlighted in red. And now our normal stunt one and stunt two flight modes are controlled by switch D. Now we've moved the flight mode function from switch K to switch D, but we wanna make sure that switch K is truly disabled and switch D is truly our flight mode. So we're gonna look at the screen on the transmitter and you'll see right under flight mode setting, it says current flight mode normal. And across from normal, you'll see the normal mode is on. Stunt one is off, stunt two is off. We're gonna flip switch K through all its positions and we should not hear anything or see any changes to the screen. Okay, the current flight mode remained in normal. And looking in the lower part of the screen, there were no changes down here. So switch K is definitely not controlling the flight mode. Now we're gonna flip switch D. We should see a change here from normal to stunt one to stunt two as we flip through the flight modes. And looking over here to the right of the switch icons, we should see the word on move from the normal mode to stunt one, to stunt two as we flip the switches. And we also should hear the transmitter announce the flight mode. Stunt one. Okay, we've moved the flight mode switch from normal to the stunt one position. Current flight mode says stunt one. Over here, normal mode is now off, stunt one is now on. And of course we heard the voice announce it as well. So we're gonna flip it to the stunt two position Stunt two. Current flight mode now says stunt two. Normal is off, stunt one is off, stunt two is on. So we've successfully moved the flight mode switch and tested it to make sure it is where we want it. Normal. For the time being, we're done with the flight mode setting screen. So we're gonna back out of it and return to the home screen. In the next video, we're going to check that the dual rate and expo functions have been automatically mapped to the flight mode switch. And we're going to start setting up throttle hold. Thank you.